I made one of the biggest decisions in my life earlier this year uh, with I have stone in mind. Uh, I left my longtime home at a legacy media outlet at Rolling Stone uh, to go to a reader supported model. And um, as he noted in my announcement, I pointed out uh, that basically the part of the reasoning was that I thought the traditional model for supporting journalism, which was based on the idea that reporters worked for big companies or wealthy patrons, uh, who in turn gave them a share of advertising or, or subscription revenue, uh, that that was no longer uh, really working for journalism at a fundamental level. And I thought that the logical end game of what was going on today was to cut out the middleman and have people like me work directly for readers in the same way that I.F. Stone did. And I'm happy to report that in the months since I made that move, uh, this my subscription base has uh, expanded massively. And I, I now feel like I reach far more readers than I ever have before. So I think as a proof of concept for independent journalists, uh, what, what I'm doing and what a lot of other people are doing on platforms like Substack uh, offers a lot of hope that there is another route for journalists beyond um, the, the traditional route of going to work for a big corporate organization. Uh, and this for me was very much something that I wanted to emulate in, in the manner of Stone who once described himself, this is the term he used, he said he was a wholly independent newspaper man standing alone without organization or party backing, beholden to no one but my good readers. And I, I thought about that a lot. And it, it's interesting, if you do this job long enough, and I've been doing it almost uh, 30 years now, uh, journalism eventually will force you to choose between um, your friends and principles. Uh, and for this reason, the profession tends to favor a certain type of personality uh, that doesn't mind being alone all that much. And uh, I, I was thinking about people I, who I knew growing up uh, who taught me a, a little bit about this lifestyle. In my late 20s, when I was a reporter, a young reporter working in Moscow, Russia, uh, I came to be friends with a, a number of uh, Russia's newly liberated uh, journalists. Um, the, the period after the collapse of the Soviet Union and kind of before Vladimir Putin consolidated power in, in Russia saw an extraordinary flowering of some of the most amazing journalism I think that we've, we've seen um, in the modern era. And these were truly great muckrakers. There were men and women uh, who were not only brilliant gatherers of information, but they were uh, and, and uh, wrote were gorgeous writers in the Russian language, but also they risked their lives on a daily basis. Uh, in the 90s and early 2000s, there were Russian journalists who I, I knew who were um, forcibly institutionalized, uh, who had their legs and arms broken. Uh, there was one uh, who I wasn't personally familiar with, but uh, who was, worked for an organization that I knew well, who was killed by an exploding briefcase. There were people who were shot there was even one reporter I knew um, who was killed by a poison telephone, if you can believe that. Uh, and among uh, these, these great muckrakers was a person I, I knew named uh, Leonid Krutakov. And uh, Leonid was a short, muscular man with sort of John Lennon Coke bottle glasses and a quiet demeanor, but he was a very dogged investigator. And um, he was working at a, at a time in Russia when all the major media outlets were essentially owned by oligarchical mob interests. Basically, if you worked at one newspaper, you were uh, telling the news as maybe Vladimir Gusinsky wanted it. If you worked at another, it was the mobster Boris Berezovsky's version of events you were telling. And at a third, it might be Vladimir Vinogradov. And Leonid was be briefly famous um, in town because he kept moving from newsroom to newsroom. Within the space of a year and a half, he uh, was uh, hired and fired by six different organizations. Um, every time he would get hired, he would find something that would irritate his bosses enough that they would fire him uh, and find a way to get it in print and get himself fired again. Uh, for instance, in July of 1997, he was working for Izvestia, which was at the time aligned 
with the, the pro-Western wing of the Kremlin, and he wrote a story that uh, outed one of the most prominent pro-Western politicians in the Kremlin as having received a no-interest $3 million loan from a crooked bank. Uh, that story got him, both him and his editor, fired. Uh, at the next job he went to, uh, he published a story uh, that got him uh, both fired and physically beaten before he made it home uh, to his house that evening. Uh, and really, every time I saw him for a period of years, he either had a Band-Aid on his head or he was broke uh, from being unemployed. And one night I asked him, I said, um, uh, Leonid, why do you do this? You know, why do you keep picking these topics? Uh, that get you in trouble. Uh, in the word in Russian, I said, you know, why is pachimu? Why do you do this? And he answered me back, um, you know, patamu, which is basically because, right? <laughs> and that, that was his answer. And, you know, to me, that's, that's what a reporter really is. Like, why do you do what you do? Like, because there's no other reason. There's, it's not to print information that you think helps one person more than any, the other, or to emphasize that some truths are more important than other truths, or to show that one team is better than another team. You just do it because you have an urge to tell, say things that are true. And um, there are certain types of people who just have that uh, in them as part of their personality, and they, those people tend to end up in journalism. So when you ask yourself, why did I have Stone publish a newspaper, a newsletter out of his basement when he could have worked for the New York Times or the Washington Post, um, you know, and had an easy life doing that, the, the answer is because no amount of money or fancy credentials are worth any of that if you can't just say what you want when you feel like it. Um, and an independent journalist is always going to be motivated by by the instinct to say that one thing uh, that he or she is not supposed to say. And it's that kind of person who just tends not to last long in hierarchical structures or in a tightly controlled media environment like the one we live in today. Um, as Todd mentioned, I, I wrote a book a few years ago called Hate Inc. that talked about how uh, commercial and political pressures have divided the media world basically in half these days. Uh, there's two competing silos of information, each with its own set of taboos and orthodoxies. Um, and the, the reasons for this are complex, but basically it's financially it's become easy to sell rancor and division in this business. And probably not since Stone's time in, in the Red Scare have the pressures on reporters to conform to political narratives uh, been as great as they are now. And he talked then about how companies controlled reporters. He said, should a reporter resist the pressure, there are many ways to get rid of him. If his publisher is not particularly astute or independent, a little private talk, a hint that the reporter seems irresponsible, even a bit radical, that will do more than the job of getting him replaced with someone more malleable. Um, but if you insist on your independence, and this is me talking now, not him, uh, and recognize that basically once you give it up the first time to your editors that you're basically never going to get it back, uh, you have to insist on never letting that happen. And what Stone understood is that there's no shortage of truths to tell so long as you're willing to tell them not for accolades or social approval or money, but just because. As long as that's your motivation, you're always going to be able to do this job. Uh, and he wrote this. He wrote, he wrote a reporter covering the whole Capitol, uh, he meant Washington, on his own, particularly if uh, he or is his own employer, uh, is immune from these pressures. Washington is full of news. If one story is denied, he can always get another. Uh, so as a parting thought, you know, a last lesson from his career, I think Stone proved that a, a single person who is dedicated to telling the truth uh, can have more power than even the mightiest corporations like Warner Brothers or CBS or and can easily face up to the billions of dollars of PR might that a, an organization like the Pentagon has uh, because no amount of money or personnel power can make a lie true 
And, and that's why these organizations never quite know what to do with independent voices like IF Stone. Uh, they're always afraid of what they can't buy. And a journalist is, not, I think, not only oblig obligated to understand this power, but to use it um, as aggressively and as often as possible. Uh, yeah, as William Blake once wrote, uh, always be willing to speak your mind and a base man will avoid you. And there are a lot of people worth avoiding in this world and doing this job well is one of the best ways of pulling it off. Uh, and the internet now uh, offers a path for anyone to follow um, uh, IF Stone's example. And I think that's something we can all celebrate. So thank you again for this award. I'm so honored and I'm so uh, honored to share it with these other wonderful winners.